Hi everyone and welcome to Lower Blood Pressure Naturally Increasing Calcium. This is Sandy Holderhouse, the Rec Center Dietitian. And calcium is another important nutrient that we need to regulate to help control our blood pressure. Um, as you will see as we go through the slides, not getting enough calcium is not good for our blood pressure and getting too much calcium can also not be good for our blood pressure. So it's a delicate balance. So calcium in the body, you may not realize this, but calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body. It's found in our bones and teeth. And it has four primary functions. It makes the bones and teeth strong. It helps facilitate a nerve to nerve communication and it stimulates muscle contraction and that's an important one when we're discussing our blood vessels. It also activates our blood clotting factors. So uh, just to uh, make everyone aware our blood vessels are composed of a connective tissue outer wall which is made of collagen and then there's a layer of muscle in there of smooth muscle. Uh, which contracts and expands. And that leads to that pumping of the blood vessels and um, can lead to uh, high blood pressure if uh, we get that uh, smooth muscle contracting too much. And then there's also the endothelium that lines the actual vessel uh, opening. So calcium and high blood pressure how low calcium can increase our blood pressure. I know this is a little bit of a chart here, uh, but if you can just follow along, um, if we have a low calcium intake, that leads to a low calcium blood plasma. Therefore, we rob our bones and teeth of calcium and um, certain hormones are released in order to do this. So renin in the kidneys, and parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid glands. And the result of that is they act upon the adrenal gland to produce aldosterone. Um, now aldosterone increases sodium and water reabsorption. Read that as retention in the body. So instead of excreting, excreting sodium and water from our body, we now are retaining it. So if you can see the kidney lumen here, the yellow part there, the um, sodium is actually then excreted into our extracellular fluid, the ECF. That increases cardiac output, which drives our blood pressure up. So that's the process of having low sodium in the body and how that affects our blood pressure. Now, there are a couple concerns with high dose calcium. So if you're taking supplements and how that can affect a couple of the blood pressure medications. So if you're taking a thiazide diuretic, you do not want to take a high dose calcium supplement. It can disrupt the diuretics action on the kidneys. And the same with uh, calcium channel blockers, that high dose calcium can block um, that vasoconstriction. So Moving on here, calcium recommendations. Women, um, 1,000 milligrams of calcium from all sources, so including your food sources and supplements for women 50 and younger, and 1,200 milligrams for women age 51 and older. Men, we're looking at 1,000 milligrams of calcium per day, or those of you who are 70 and younger, and once over age 70, they recommend that 1200 milligrams for men. And that is from the National Osteoporosis uh, Foundation information from their website. And our final slide here, uh, sources of calcium. So um, we all kind of know the milk and cheese and dairy, but there are other sources where we can get um, smaller amounts of calcium from. So seeds such as poppy, sesame, and chia can provide some calcium in our diet. Um, the hard cheeses, um, such as Parmesan cheese, tend to be 
richer in calcium than the soft cheeses. Milk and yogurt are great sources of calcium in our diets. Um, so if you aren't um, taking in milk um, or dairy products, um, you do have to look for other sources and you may also need to do some supplementing. Uh, sardines and canned salmon, um, they are usually canned with the bones and there's calcium in the bones of the fish just like there's calcium in our bones. So that gives us a great source of calcium. Beans and lentils, in particular white beans, are very high in calcium. Almonds are a great source. Whey protein, so if you're needing to add some additional protein to your diet and you're um, okay with doing milk products, uh, whey is a milk protein and it can um, help increase the amount of calcium you're taking in during the day, especially if you mix it with um, uh, milk to um, increase, that gives you a double a dose of the calcium and um, some great, a great source of protein as well. Leafy greens such as collards, spinach, and kale. Um, I could mention broccoli there as well. Uh, rhubarb is a good source, although it's not as easily absorbable due to some anti-nutrients in it, but it still has a good amount of calcium in it. Um, foods that we find fortified with calcium. So a lot of times we'll find orange juice or our nut milks um, fortified with calcium. So those could be great sources. Um, amaranth, and that's a grain, ancient grain, and it's uh, you know becoming more popular again. We're using a lot more of these uh, grains from other countries, um, especially since a lot of people are gluten-free. Um, amaranth is one of those grains that you can have if you happen to be um, have celiac disease or be on a gluten-free diet. And I just pictured there on the side, um, it's a popular treat today. It's called chia seed pudding. And I make that at home. Um, I use a cup of um, skim milk and a cup a, of plain yogurt. And then I will mix in a fourth of a cup of chia seeds and stir that all together. Um, sometimes I put in a little bit of maple syrup, maybe a couple teaspoons of maple syrup. Um, and then uh, let that sit overnight in the refrigerator. And then I will add um, some toppings in the morning. So berries or nuts um, could be added to that. So that's all I have on calcium. Uh, remember, you can always email me if you have any questions and I'll talk to you again soon.